Welcome to this video on emotional intelligence. I'm going to walk with you over to the whiteboard and review with you what the five constructs are that we're going to address within emotional intelligence and then break them down into component parts. So come on over here and let me share this with you. Emotional intelligence as a construct has five component parts that we're going to focus on. Now there's more to it than that, but these are the main ones that are very important. Number one, self-awareness. With self-awareness, it leads to self-regulation. Self-regulation then goes to motive, self-motivation, empathy, and interpersonal relationships. Now let's break those down real briefly so they make sense. All right, now we've got the definition of emotional intelligence, meaning emotional intelligence is the ability to know one's own emotions and to read another's emotions. Starting with self-awareness. It is recognizing and understanding your own emotions, an intrapersonal relationship. What causes them? Next, what impact do your emotions have on others, an interpersonal relationship? What impact do others' emotions have in return within that same interpersonal relationship? And then on the world, an inner, this is teamwork. So intra is you, inter is you between you and one other person, and inner is between you and your team, you and your family, you and the world. Self-regulation, the ability to communicate your feelings, beliefs, and thoughts openly. The ability to defend your personal rights, your boundaries, your values. This is the key though. Just saying no or defending it doesn't mean that you've got self-regulation. You do this in a socially acceptable, non-offensive and non-destructive manner. Being belligerent or a witch about it doesn't mean you've got emotional intelligence. It just means you said no. All right. Self-motivation is the effect of being a lifelong learner. It's the willingness to persistently try to improve yourself, engage in the pursuit of personally relevant and meaningful objectives. That way you have a very rich and enjoyable life. There's kind of a goal here is that, that pursuit of happiness. Empathy, probably the most difficult and most misunderstood. It's the ability to understand and appreciate another person's feelings and thoughts to the point you can articulate your understanding of their perspective. And finally, interpersonal relationships. This is also kind of a, a big picture one. It's the ability to develop and maintain mutually satisfying relationships. Key component here, based on mutual trust and respect. Okay, now that we've covered the basic ideas of self-awareness, self-regulation, self-motivation, empathy, and interpersonal relationships, let me walk you through the sequence of how these apply, not only at work, but at home, to get us to where we want to go. So we're going to start with self-awareness. It is the most important of all. With self-awareness, it gives us the ability to recognize what's going on in our space. If we don't know what's going on, how can we correct it? How can we make the changes? Next, we're going to have self-regulation. If I know what's going on, then I have the ability to address my behavior. A very challenging thing is to address behavior, which will be covered in another video. But self-awareness, I know what's going on, gives me permission to work on, on my behavior, then ultimately leading to what we call integration. Integration is when all cylinders are firing. Integration is maximizing teamwork. Integration is synergy. Integration is interpersonal or interdependence. Integration is that function where we are operating as one. I might have six members of the team, but when we can operate with one single vision, one single will, that's integration. But it starts with integration within us, when we take our bodies in, from a fragmented state to an integrated state. All the brains are functioning, conscious, subconscious. That's integration. That's where we want to go with this. 